What's up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting video because today we are going to be talking all about letters of recommendation. So if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Rachel. I graduated from UC Berkeley in May 2020 where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies. And now I'm currently working full time at a law firm. So if you are applying to colleges this cycle, you should definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting. We are a team of recent graduates who specialize in reviewing college application essays and consulting one-on-one -on -one with students and parents. Definitely check out our website and social medias. On our website, we post weekly blogs full of our advice, and then on our social medias, we also post a ton of of tips and tricks. So without further ado, let's get into this video about letters of recommendation. And so for this video, I'm going to be talking about letters of recommendation more from a college application standpoint, but these tips also work for getting letters of recommendation when you're applying to full-time jobs or also applying to grad school. Now is the time to start thinking about your letters of recommendation, especially for the college application process, with many colleges now going test optional or no longer accepting standardized tests like the SAT or ACT, these letters of recommendation have become even more important. On the other hand, some colleges for their college apps may not even require letters of recommendation at all. So when you're creating your college lists right now, that is something to note. Do you need letters of recommendation for the schools you're applying to or do you not? So first, let's talk about what are letters of recommendation. So basically, letters of recommendation are written by someone else about you. Their purpose is to allow the reader of the letter of recommendation to gain more insight into you as a college applicant or job applicant. It's basically to give a different perspective of who you are. For many colleges, your guidance counselor will be writing a letter of recommendation for all of the students. In my recent video about how to prepare for college as a 9th, 10th, and 11th grader in high school, I mentioned as a 10th grader you should start to go into your guidance counselor's office talk to them, get to know them. If you go to a large high school like I did, chances are your guidance counselor doesn't really know you, so you really want to get on a first name basis with them. So for me, I periodically scheduled meetings with them, went into their office, and updated them about my life so they would know who I was as a person. And so with this, if your guidance counselor doesn't know you, this letter of recommendation may sound very, very generic because they're writing one for every student in your grade. So the way to combat this would be to schedule those meetings with your guidance counselor, talk to them, get to know them, ask them for advice, update them on your life and what you're achieving inside and outside of the classroom. So the guidance counselor letter of recommendation is not really something that you can get around, but for a lot of schools that is like a mandatory one that every guidance counselor writes. The next kind of letter of recommendation is the teacher letter of recommendation. With the teacher letter, you have more freedom here because you get to choose which teachers you want to write your letters of recommendation. So typically for a lot of colleges, they will require two letters of recommendations from two of your teachers. And so for this, it would be smart to ask two of your junior year high school teachers to write your letters because they just taught you this year, it's fresh in their minds, and typically by junior year, you're starting to take higher level classes like AP courses. You may consider asking a sophomore year teacher if there was someone you really bonded with, but I would personally stray away from asking a freshman year teacher because that would be too long ago and it doesn't really show who you are as a student now when you're applying to colleges. With these teacher letters of recommendation, you may consider 
asking two teachers who are teaching different subjects. So you really wouldn't want to ask two of your math teachers to write you letters of recommendation. Something else to note is that some colleges may require that you get one STEM letter of recommendation and one humanities letter of recommendation. So that's something when you're doing your research and creating your college list is something to think about and note down what requirements are needed. So for me, my letters came from one was my AP calculus teacher and the other was from my AP bio teacher. For my AP calculus teacher, I was also involved in the math honor society in my high school. So I thought because she was the advisor of the math honor society, I saw her in class for AP calc and I also worked with her in the math honor society. So she could see me inside the classroom as a student and also write about me as a member of the math honor society outside of the classroom. For my AP bio teacher, I really, really liked biology as a subject, so I thought that was perfect. And I was one of only three juniors in the class. The rest of the AP bio class was all seniors. So at the end of the year, once all of the seniors graduated in May, but every other student were stuck in school until June, us three juniors got to just hang out with the teacher and really got to know him because we were the only three students left in the class. And so like I just talked about some reasons why I chose these two teachers for my letters of recommendation. Some other criteria when you're thinking about who you may want to write your letters would be to think about which teachers know you well. So you want to ask teachers that know you, they know your name first off, they can write about you, they know what kind of student you are. You really don't want to ask a teacher who you've never talked to, they don't even know your first name, something like that. Additionally, you don't need to ask for letters from teachers that you got the best grade in the class in, but you may also consider asking a letter from a teacher where maybe you struggled in the class. So maybe you didn't get the best grade, but you spent the time to ask questions, schedule meetings after school to talk with the teacher, to ask questions, to get the extra help. And definitely that different side can show perseverance, hard work, maybe you didn't get the top grade, but you really, really put in the time and effort to learn the subject and try to get those high grades. And so finally, the last kind of letter would be the other kind of letter. So this can be anyone from like a coach, a volunteering mentor, some kind of adult in your life. And so these are usually like supplemental letters for colleges. They aren't required, but the college may allow you to submit one or two supplemental letters. For me, when applying to colleges, none of my colleges accepted these supplemental letters. So I did not ask like a coach or volunteer volunteering person to write me another letter. I only had the guidance counselor letter and then my two teacher letters of recommendation. So moving into what to do when you're asking for your letters. So the first thing is to ask your teachers early. I asked my two teachers if they would be willing to write my letter at the end of my junior year before the summer happened because some teachers may have a list. They only will write letters for the first five students that ask them. So if you waited until the fall of your senior year, you may have missed out because that teacher's list is already full. So asking them now and then reminding them later on in the fall is the perfect way to go. And I say would be willing to write my letter because you don't want to just assume that the teacher will say yes because you sort of want to give that option. Would you be able to write me a good letter? And hopefully the teacher is a good teacher and they will say no if they don't feel comfortable writing your letter. And so at first you might be like, oh my gosh, that's so scary, that's so mean. But in reality, you want the teachers to be brutally honest with you if they think they can't write you a good letter. Because personally, I would rather have a teacher reject me than write a crappy letter that is so generic, they might not even say good things about you in the letter. That is going to look worse for college applicants applications, then getting rejected by a teacher, and then you go back home, you think about it, and then you ask another teacher who could actually write you a good letter of recommendation. So give your teachers that option, and that's why you start early, so if someone does reject you, you can go back to the drawing boards and then ask a different teacher. 
For me personally, I would try to ask the teachers in person if that's possible. If you're doing online school right now, you can do it online. Maybe email the teacher and ask, okay, a few minutes after class, can we stay back on the Zoom call and can I like ask you something? And then ask them face to face there. So either way, it's still like face to face, whether it is in person or if you stay back on the Zoom call to ask them one on one. If your school is ending or maybe you don't feel that comfortable asking in person, you can email them, but I would say try to do it in person because the email, it could get lost in all of their other emails. They might forget to respond to it, and I feel like it feels less professional than if you asked in person or on Zoom. So the next thing, after you've asked them, they say yes at the end of your junior year. You go through the summer, the teacher probably isn't working on it yet in the summer. So once you go back to school in the fall, then you need to remind your teachers about these letters of recommendation. In the fall, when you go back to school, create a little packet for these teachers, give them all of the information that they need, how to submit these essays on the Common App, if there's like a word count that the colleges are giving you, compile this for your teachers when you're reminding them like, hey, remember last year you said you could write me a letter. Thank you so much. Here is all the information that you need. Remind them also of any deadlines. So if there's a date and time that they need to have this submitted by for the common application letters of recommendation, remind them that they are writing one letter of recommendation that will be sent to every single common app school that you're applying to. So with that, you should remind them that this letter of recommendation is not for one specific school. So in the letter, they shouldn't say, my student wants to go to X school. I think this student would be great for X school. Like, no, they should not be mentioning any specific school, but they should be talking about you generally because this letter is being sent to every single school you're applying to. When you are reminding the teachers of this deadline, all the information, you may also add to the packet a little information about you as a student. So teachers will probably be writing a handful of letters of recommendation. They have so many students every single year. They probably won't remember every single little detail about you as a student specifically. So a way to combat this and to get your letter to be a little bit more personal and less generic, consider typing up a sheet about facts about you, any accomplishments that you accomplished in their class, why you chose them as a letter, so if you chose a STEM teacher because you're interested in engineering, you may want to write about that so they can include it in the letter that you are interested in an engineering major. If you have any stories between you and the teacher that would be good to share, you can share some of your grades in the teacher's class. So if you got all A's, then that's something good so the teacher can include it. Although they probably have that information already, good to include it as well. You can also include how you grew as as a student inside of this classroom. Maybe you struggled at first, but then you got a hang of things. Maybe you tutored people in this subject inside and outside of the classroom. Maybe you raised your hand a lot or you helped other students who were struggling, stuff like that. And so all of these things are examples. You don't need to include all of them, but pick and choose of things that you could include in the little packet that you're giving your teacher of information to jog the teacher's memory about who you are as a student. And so finally, with these letters, you want to 100% thank your letters of recommendation writers. So after the deadline, you can email them, but also you may consider getting a little note card and buying the teacher a small gift if that's allowed in your school to thank them for writing your letter. And also, considering if the teacher did say yes to writing your letters of recommendation, they probably care about you and have some kind of invested interest with Within you, so definitely keep them posted, keep them updated about where you end up getting accepted to and what college you end up choosing. But do not forget to thank them because they are putting in extra hours outside of the school day to write these letters for students. So yeah, that is some information and tips about letters of recommendation. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about letters or check out Study Hall College Consulting if you 
want to talk one-on-one -on -one with any of our consultants about letters of recommendation. So thank you all so, so much for watching. It really means a lot. Make sure you like this video to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel to see more. I will see you all next time. Thank you.